Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Quran Weekly, this is your brother Umar Sulaiman. You know, the Prophet sallallahu said that the best dhikr, khayru dhikr, is la ilaha illallah, kalimatul ikhlas, saying that there is no God, no deity worthy of worship or unconditional obedience except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's the statement of sincerity because it, it's a statement of negation, negating everything else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your entire life will be in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders you to do and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa orders you to do. You're saying that nothing matters to you more than Allah subhanahu and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So it's a statement of priorities. It's a statement of sincerity. It's the statement that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qala la ilaha illallah harram allahu alayhi nar. In one narration he said, dakhal al-jannah. Whoever says la ilaha illallah would enter paradise. And Abu, da, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, or he said, you know, what about someone who committed theft and adultery? He said, even someone who committed theft and adultery, if he sincerely had, idha haqqaq al-tawheed, if he really had the true uh, expression of tawheed, he would, he would enter paradise even with that. And Rasulullah said, whoever says La ilaha illallah will enter paradise. And in one narration, even with Mu'adh radiallahu anhu and Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu also, Rasulullah said, Man qala la ilaha illallah harram allahu alayhi nar. Whoever says it, then hellfire would be forbidden from him. And Al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah, he said that the first one is, is, is a great virtue, that he would enter paradise. But the second one is even more explicit and more specific. And we know that the Prophet told us that on the day of judgment, that whenever the person's sins are placed into, that, into the scale of, 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 into the mizan, and he sees all of those books of deeds being placed there, and he would, see, he would think that he's doomed, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring forth this one card, written upon it, La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah, and the believer would think, what is this going to do for me? What can this card do with that? And the Prophet said it would be placed on the scale of good deeds and it would send all of the books of sins flying. So this is an amazing statement. And you know, we want to live by that statement because La ilaha illallah is the key. And the a'mal, the actions are the teeth of that key so that we can enter into paradise bidn ta'ala. And you know, I want you to think about something really, really amazing about the statement of La ilaha illallah. And Imam Ibn Hazm rahimahullah, he said something very interesting about La ilaha illallah and why it would be considered kalimatul ikhlas. You know, the Prophet said that if you die saying La ilaha illallah, man kana akhira kalami, if your last words are La ilaha illallah, you would enter paradise. It would be a state, you would be raised up saying La ilaha illallah. What more could you want than that? So it's like a, it's, it's like a death of martyrdom. And yuthabbitu Allahu ladina amanu bil qawl al thabit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it al qawl al thabit, the statement that makes you firm. Okay, so it is, it's, it's what you want to die with. It, essentially, we want to die with it and we want to be raised with it. And in order to make sure that we are going to die saying La ilaha illallah, inshaAllah, we want to consistently be saying it as we are living. Now, obviously, it's really hard for you to do dhikr all the time, right? And some people do dhikr and it's like they're showing off. They got these humongous uh, tasbihs, right? That look like each one of them could knock you across the head. You got people sitting in these gatherings and they're having all kinds of conversations, but they're moving their tasbih. You're not doing any dhikr if you're looking at someone talking about politics, but you're doing this. Right? It's the expression of tasbih. Now, think about any other form of dhikr that you do. And this is the statement of Imam Ibn Hazm rahimahullah. He wrote this. He said, the reason, he said one of the reasons why it's called kalimat al-ikhlas, the statement of sincerity, is that any other form of remembrance would require an outward expression. So for example, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Right? You're u making use of your lips. So anyone can look at you and tell that you're saying those things. He said, except for la ilaha illallah. You know why? Because you could actually close your mouth and say la ilaha illallah without even moving your lips. Because la ilaha illallah requires no outer expression. It's just using the tongue. So subhanAllah, you could be sitting literally in your workplace, on the bus, on the plane, you know, in a gathering, and your mouth is closed, and you're consistently saying, La ilaha illallah, sincerely, only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else sees it or hears it except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is a greater expression of sincerity? And the Prophet ﷺ said, keep your tongue moist with La ilaha illallah. So keep it moist with la ilaha illallah. It requires no effort. Even when you're at work and someone's talking to you, you got a big smile on your face, keep your tongue behind your teeth saying la ilaha illallah until it becomes the ultimate reality of your heart. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to live and die and be raised by la ilaha illallah. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Was this really the camera that was used to film Nurman Ali Khan? Really? It was? Allahu Akbar, mashallah. I am so honored to be in your presence, O camera. Oh my God.